Hey, moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the Wawa Water Boy, duh! Well, good morning, good people. It is Taco Tuesday, and I hope all your taco dreams come true. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. So, we are here getting another step closer today is the 2nd of july 4th of july coming up on thursday and the dallas cowboys will start reporting in oxnard on the 23rd we guys are three weeks away from the players getting there to oxnard to start training camp we are three weeks and a day away from training camp being opening opening where of course we end up having uh, Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and Mike McCarthy having their opening press conference. And we are only 65 days away from the kickoff of the season. I don't know about you, but I am ready because I'm sick and tired of all the speculation, all the bullshit talk. You know, the Cowboys should trade for this one. The Cowboys have interest. or All of the crazy scenarios that never come to fruition, okay? I want to actually talk about something that's happening in practice. You know, like how many interceptions Dak Prescott is throwing in practice. You know, because literally that's what it was going into training camp last year. We sitting here, I'm supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. I mean, listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game. Not not a game. game, Not a game. Practice. Yeah, I can't wait to start talking about practice. Because at least it's something that's tangible. I am ready to get this bad taste of the Cowboys offseason just out of my mouth. I just It just tastes bad. And I want to get back to having some hope. And I hope one of the things that I have to say is typically <clears throat> what the Dallas Cowboys is, when the Cowboys are expected to do something is when they least do. I don't know why it is. It just seems that way when the Cowboys are expected to do something, they don't. It just doesn't happen. And so here's where we're looking at everybody who's just been talking about the Cowboys, you know, and everybody's on the hot seat and things. Now, see, last night I was on this kick of I'm just sick of this shit and that they should just blow it up. That the whole thing of, you know, well, Trey Lance, the Cowboys are exploring Trey Lance being the starter and all this bullshit. Um, the Micah Parsons, Malik Hooker situation. And should the Cowboys trade C.D. Lamb or Micah Parsons if you can only sign two? You know, Jerry Jones and, of course, Stephen Jones at odds and everything. It's just like, could we just maybe not be them boys for a minute and just be like everybody else? It, that, that's literally how I felt yesterday. It's just like, you know, this is crazy. You know, I I feel like the Cowboys ripping it up and trying to start all over means you're still relying on the people that have been doing the same thing for the last 30 years. And listening to this, it still blows my mind away. It blows my mind away that... We sit here with Mike McCarthy. And Mike McCarthy, of course, is on the hot seat, right? But I want you to understand. Here's where it's interesting, at least to me. The Dallas Cowboys have had nine coaches in their career. Nine coaches, okay? Now, the laundry hat has... Their top five coaches in Cowboys history. They have not Jason Garrett in the top five, surprisingly. They have Mike McCarthy as the fifth best. Okay. And I want to go into this a little bit because I actually would actually say something a little bit different maybe than what they have. Because Mike McCarthy um, being, in, well, actually they're saying it's a surprise that he's at fifth best. Mike McCarthy inclusion might come as a surprise, but his impact on the franchise since he arrived in 2020 is undeniable. Taking over for Jason the Clapper Garrett, 
who fittingly finished 8-8 eight and eight in his final season, okay? And I want you to understand, Jason Garrett had four 8-8 eight eight seasons, okay? Three in which he had in a row. And we should have fired him then, okay? If you didn't fire Jason Garrett after three 8-8 eight eight seasons, how is it you're talking about firing Mike McCarthy with four 12s? He unfortunately doesn't have the playoff success to show for it, but a team that hasn't won 12 games in consecutive seasons since it happened four years in a row in the 90s. So let's, let's put this in perspective. This is the first coach that the Cowboys have put in since Jimmy Johnson that has had this much of regular season success. Be it, I get it. We're, not talking, about, we're talking about playoffs being different. Say what you want about the Cowboys falling short under McCarthy. He installed a consistency that fans haven't since seen since they won Super Bowls four years between 92. I won three Super Bowls in four years between 92 and 95. McCarthy's win percentage, 627, is the highest of any Cowboys coach. Yeah. Right? So, you could also look at and say, with him calling plays with Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb, the Cowboys offense score more points than anybody else in the NFL. They have Bill Parcells. Bill Parcells at number four. Bill is no head coach in Cowboys. Is, is, there is no head coach in Cowboys history that did more with less than Bill Parcells did. And Bill Parcells picked up after three, five, and 11 seasons. So it's true. For starters, Parcells inherited a team that had three straight five and 11 seasons before him. Incredibly, he led Dallas to the playoffs in his first year at the helm. They made the playoffs in two of his four years, and he was unable to capture a postseason win, but rebuilt the roster and set the team up for future success. So here's my thing. If you get rid of Mike McCarthy right now, you have to look at this and say, he set the team up for success as well when you think of the players that they ended up getting under his two. I mean, you've got Tyler Smith, you got CeeDee Lamb, you got Micah Parsons, you got Jake Ferguson, and we'll see about Cooper Beebe, and we'll see about um, Tyler Guyton. But you ended up getting some great players. If somebody comes in here, and I'm not sure who wants to come in here understanding that you know you get sick of dealing with the Joneses, but you've won more percentage-wise games than anybody else. You have the highest-scoring offense last year. You have made your quarterback and your wide receivers top in the NFL. And you've been to the playoffs three of the four years. And you almost made it without your quarterback. So I'm not sure that Bill Parcells should be. And, you know, if Bill Parcells could have stayed longer, maybe. But Bill Parcells making the playoffs was 50% of the time. Mike McCarthy has been 75. Barry Switzer. Now, yes, Barry Switzer was the coach in name when they won the Super Bowl the third time. But I'm not sure that you really give him credit because he had a team that had already won back-to-back Super Bowls that was loaded for Bear. So that's where I kind of look at this and say, Barry Switzer, I know he won a Super Bowl. I know he won a Super Bowl, but do you really look and say, oh, that Barry Switzer, man, he was in it? No, you don't. So I'm not sure I put Barry Switzer at third. Jimmy Johnson, second, no problem. Tom Landry, of course. Number one was the offense and defensive coordinator. He ran everything. You, you cannot dis, you know you, you cannot disregard any of that. Um, although his playoff wins were twenty and sixteen, um, you still have to say that guy was incredible. So we're now talking about putting a guy who has done something with the Cowboys that have not happened since the second best coach that they've had in their history, Jimmy Johnson, which is having three years of 12-win seasons. He's the only guy who's had back-to-back-to-back playoff wins in 30 years. I believe he's the only guy that's had his quarterback and wide receivers 
top in the NFL. And if you didn't fire Jason Garrett for eight and eight and eight and eight, then how is it you fire Mike McCarthy? Especially as you've gone through and have deconstructed the roster, letting go Amari Cooper, letting go, you know, starting offensive linemen, letting go edge rushers and things. You're not changing and bringing in any free agents of any note to try and supplement it. Now, here's a little take here that I will look at. And see, here lies the problem for the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, let's take a look at this. This is per fo- Pro Football Focus, okay? Pro Football Focus has the Cowboys as the ninth best roster in football. You'd like to be better, you know? I mean, we could go back through and look at the teams that are ahead of them by Pro Football Focus, and everybody's got their own rankings and things. Biggest strength, of course, was pass rushing. Pass rush led by Micah Parsons to Marcus Lawrence is among the best in the league. That was the case for 23. For the second consecutive year, Dallas ranked second in the NFL pass rush grade. Uh, Parsons and Lawrence contributed such um, as Os- Osa and Digazua and Sam Williams made the defense. I'm not sure Sam Williams really did. Actually, it would be more of Dorrance Armstrong. We hope Sam Williams will. Biggest weakness. And I'd actually say there's another one that they're not talking about too much. The Cowboys' primary weakness over the last couple of years have been their run defense. And see, the run defense is now the new safety room. You'll remember when we were talking about, you know, trading for Jamal Adams and um, what's his name, you know, come get me from Seattle, because we literally had no safeties. We literally, the safety room was non-existent, okay? I think the Cowboys were ready to take linebacker and make him safety at that point. Now it's defensive interior line. Run stopping. They ranked seventh in run defense grade last year. That ranking is heavily weighted by the standout performances against teams like the Jets and Chargers. When tasked with stopping better rushing offenses like the 49ers Eagles, they tend to come up short more often than not. And that's the truth, Ruth. And when we go through and we look at the Cowboys' offensive rankings and things, you see passing, great. When you see running the football, you know, Cowboys are like number one in, you know, uh, points, I think third in passing yards and things. But then you get running the ball last year, it's 15th. And I'm not sure that changing Zeke Elliott for Tony Pollard is going to improve that number very much right there. And here's and lies the other situation is the defensive line. They are literally, and let's look at this, um, position-wise, numbers. I don't know, I hope you can see this. Uh, pro football focus grades, Dak Prescott, 90. Okay, that's great. Zeke Elliott, 67? Mm, might be a little high. Rico, 66. So you're not real high as far as your running backs go. CD, 90. Great. Brandon Cook, 68. Eh, that's not bad. And Jalen Tolbert, 56. Jake Ferguson, 74. Fantastic. Tyler Guyton, they've already got it at 63. You've got um, Ty- Tyler Smith, of course, 74. Brock Hoffman in a 53, but it might be Cooper Beebe. And you've got Zach Martin at 68. And Terrence Steele at a 52. So you look at that and say, off of last year's performance, Terrence Steele and center were your two biggest weaknesses. Hopefully Terrence Steele gets better because of he's a year away from the ACL. But look where the weakest link is right now on our defense. Right now, it's Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith. There's a lot of hope and prayers on a guy who has shoulder surgery in the offseason. If we do not improve that 47 and get it to at least the 60s, we're going to be in the exact same spot. And thus far, the Cowboys don't have much depth on the defensive line. This is the Achilles heel. And you look at this and say, you're not far away, guys. A couple of players. You can't tell me that the Cowboys can't find a way to A, sign those guys, and B, you could have signed a guy like Calais Campbell for $2 million. Be it that he's older, 
he would have majorly improved your defensive line. You can't tell me that you can't afford to do that. You can't tell me that you can't afford to add the running back. You're not far away, which is what makes you want to pull your hair out. And in the end, knowing that you've got glaring weaknesses in here in the same thing that has stopped you the last few years, stopping the run, and you've done nothing to stop it on the defensive front, is a travesty. And instead, we blame the quarterback and the coach. It's crazy. It is absolutely, positively crazy. All right, so... We're going to end this morning, and i got some nice work to do. It's going to be only 81 degrees out today, which is fantastic. And um, i got some more work to do here on the Red Brick House and some other things we're going to be running around and doing. And i got that cast iron wood-burning stove that I'm going to be trying to take apart and stuff. So I want to get going on that stuff. But we're going to go to ESPN on contract questions for the Cowboys. Let's talk some NFL football. A uh, little NFC East edition to believe it or not with the guys. Graz, you know, Jalen Hurts, Eagles, biggest threat to the 49ers, believe it or not. I'm going to go with not. I think the I biggest threat to the 49ers is the team that had a 17-point halftime lead on them in the NFC Championship game. That would be the Detroit Lions, who brought back their offensive and defensive coordinators, as opposed to changing offensive and defensive coordinators for the second offseason in a row. A lot of new stuff going on in Philadelphia. We've got to see it all work before we fully buy in. Hard to believe Eagles were one in six after November last season. All right, Kevin, this will be Daniel Jones' last season with the Giants, believe it or not. I believe that when he plays, he is not very good. On top of that, he is expensive. On top of that, he is injured. In the last four of the last five years, uh, he has missed at least two games. They tried to replace him last year uh, in the draft. I just think that we're, we're heading towards the start where he doesn't even play this year than he's done as a starter. Um, Graz, C.D. Lamb will hold out of training camp, believe it or not. I believe that he will if there's no new deal in place by training camp. Now, I also believe that they should be able to get to a deal by training camp because once the Justin Jefferson deal is done, I think you, me, and Kevin could have figured out C.D. Lamb's contract in about <laughs> five minutes. It's pretty obvious what it should be and what it should look like. It's still not done yet. I, I think they've got a chance to get it done sometime in the next three weeks. But if they don't, I do not believe you will see C.D. Lamb there in Oxnard when the Cowboys report. You know, speaking of C.D. Lamb, Cowboy safety Malik Hooker, talked about CeeDee Lamb on a podcast and being paid before Dak. Take a listen to this. I feel like CeeDee should be paid first for the simple fact of what he does for us, you know, how valuable he is for us, the leader he is for us as a team. I'll go CeeDee one. You can interchange Zach and Dak at two. Micah still has a lot to prove. Like, he's, he's done a, a great job his first couple years in the league. Don't get me wrong. He's a, he's a fantastic player. But I feel like Micah still has a surface that he don't even know that he can scratch as far as what he's doing. So I would say Micah. I would say Micah's last just for that reason. Interesting. Well, he gave a rundown <laughs> of everything <laughs> on who down. should get paid, what do you when, need us where. For? Uh, Neek, I got to get your reaction to what Malik Hooker had to say. I think that Malik Hooker recognizes that the Cowboys need drama. And it's just been too quiet in Dallas yeah, for too long. So need Malik drama. Hooker we got drama, to say people. something to get everybody stirred up because that is the steady state in Dallas. It is something for sports media to talk about. So thank you, Malik, for giving us something to chew on for the next few days and all of Dallas sports media, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kev, I got to come to you on this yeah. one. How would you describe, then, the Cowboys' handling of all these contract situations? If you took the team name off, if you took the logo <laughs> off funny. and you said which team did this happen to, this entire situation, you would guess the Dallas Cowboys one million times out of one million times. This is how they handle contracts. This is how they handle mm -hmm. media access and drama. A couple of years ago, Dan Graziano gave me his wrong phone number. He was one digit off, okay? So for two years, he typed it every, it wrong. oh no, I think it was you. <laughs> so I know my phone for number. For two years, for two years, every time I text him, <laughs> It would just go to somebody else, okay? Yeah, that, the reason I tell this story is not to embarrass my, my boomer friend here. Again, I still don't think I did anything wrong. <laughs> it's to tell you that the only excuse that the Cowboys have with Dak Prescott's contract, CeeDee Lamb's contract, Micah Parsons' contract, is that they have the wrong number for the agents. 
Mm. And they've been texting Dak Prescott's agent for years, and he just hasn't been writing back. Yeah. That's the only way they've handled their business in a way that makes any sense. They are always waiting for a market to crash that is never going to crash. It hasn't crashed in decades. The price of premium players is always going up. It's like real estate. There's a reason young people don't own houses anymore. It's because they don't know when to get in at the right time. Huh. And so for me, I just think the Cowboys don't handle their business. They open themselves up to this sort of clown show and it just repeats itself over and over. They never learn. Okay, so then how are the Cowboys Graz going to handle this? How are you going to handle this besides giving him your right number? I gave him the right number. He, wrote, he <laughs> put it in late. wrong. Two years he put late. it in wrong. Hey, listen, the, Cow the Hooker's right. Like, CD Lamb is, is priority number one mainly because Dak Prescott's contract situation is going to be very difficult to figure out as a result of him having all the leverage. They can't franchise him, right? He does not have to make one single move in their direction until they come to him with the deal he wants. So C.D. Lamb, I think, will be easier to get done. The wide receiver market is what it is. They may not like it, but they're going to have to pay yep. him in the low to mid 30 millions at least to get this done, possibly more. Uh, but you're, I mean, Kevin's right. Like, we have seen this in, in past training camps, right? We go back to Ezekiel Elliott who held out, and they eventually gave him the deal he wanted. Last year, Zach Martin did the same thing, right, and got the deal that he wanted. So I, I think you see this repeat itself. I think C.D. Lamb will get done, and then Dak Prescott, I mean, who knows? He could play out the whole season uh, and be a free Love agent it. in March, which would really be something. Nick, from a player's perspective, does any of this affect play on the field? Eh, I don't think so. I mean, especially not in Dallas. I think, if anything, it puts them in a position where they want to be, where there's something to talk about and something to motivate them. I'm just mad at Dan for not telling me that trick. All you had to do was give Kevin one <laughs> wrong number, and then he would leave you the hell alone? It's that easy? It's that easy. It's that easy? Hey, oh, we're friends, bro. <laughs> that is fantastic. Kev, give me your yeah. thoughts on there. You heard, you heard what Nick says. He didn't think it would affect the players on the field. What do you think? I sort of disagree. Now, Fox and I are both high-level athletes. He played in the NFL, great college career. I can break 90 in golf. And so, and I've done that more recently than Fox has played in the NFL, just, just so you know. Um, so we understand the athlete's mindset. And for me, I think that when you're getting in a contract, I think unsettled money can be a distraction. I think we overrate distractions all the time. We say, oh, there's a distraction. This is. If a guy isn't settled contract-wise, that can be, hey, does he play through a hamstring injury? Does he go a couple extra reps afterwards if, he, if he's worried about his contract going in? I don't think the typical contract year discourse matters with these guys because all of them are going to get paid. Micah Parsons could get, have a devastating injury, still get paid. Dak Prescott, same deal. CeeDee Lamb, same situation. The problem is the Cowboys lose every contract stare down. Mm. Dan mentioned it. They every do. single one, the player ends up winning. They know that, so they know how to play hardball. I mean, Ezekiel Elliott just went and, and worked out in Cabo for a couple of months and got all the money he asked for. Mm -hmm. That's the cheat code. And so they know what yep. to do and they can run all over the Cowboys. That's the biggest problem. I just know I, 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 I never knew that I'd have the athletic mindset once I broke 90. You all right, there you go. The players have all the leverage. And we as fans are held hostage. All right, good people. Hope everybody has a great day. I'm going to go get busy and get some work done. And, uh, you know, we're just waiting for...